some few people who know the lyrics they sing it with that pathos and that feeling the people who are used to hearing it the same way they say oh, he's singing it differently while well, actually he is the one who is singing it correctly <laughs> <laughs> but when i started first giving concerts i was young and my audience were mostly senior citizens but now that i am becoming a senior citizen my audience age is becoming <laughs> below 10 tere kitta tak tum tere kitta tak nam tere kitta tak tilla nadadrathi so naturally when i am singing i'll feel the moment my accompanies will feel so that whole happy feeling will come and uh, this is different from that which is what carnatic music is branded as usually so uh, if you had met me at that time you would have seen a very different person because I'll, oh i'm seeing so much i'm working so hard and nobody is calling me and so you know, just always i can't imagine i really can't imagine yeah. that you i know that really that was the case i was very very sad and frustrated and angry and helpless and you don't know what to do but i know what to do that i don't want to do <laughs> they can't sing pa steadily pa ma pa da pa ma ga ma pa da pa ma ga ma pa ma ga ni da ni da ni ga ma pa da ni da pa ma pa da ni da i will go on like that you know so they, when they, i am a carnatic musician and i just sang this now but if i hear me even me sing pa ma pa da pa ma ga ma pa ma ga i don't find that musical at all or attractive or aesthetic Our guest today is a Carnatic musician who is also a great teacher. He is a renowned singer and a veena artist. He needs no introduction, so let us welcome Prince Rama Verma. But before I call him on, it is important to say how much Prince Verma emphasizes on verse, and we'll ask him why. Namaskar. Nam- Namaskar. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here. same same here it's an honor having you as our guest so uh, prince parma i wanted to ask you uh, you know uh, i sing sufi so you know in my experience uh, everything uh, like the music and literature go hand in hand and uh, in mm. bhakti singing uh, you know the poetry is at the center and everything revolves around it whether it is the composition or the expression or you know the bharat so i i was just inquisitive uh, is it same in the carnatic music as well and how do you say it uh, yeah well uh, the two questions have <laughs> two different answers one is it the same in carnatic music and how i see it so in carnatic music it started very much like what you said from the bhajana sampradaya from the uh, from purandara dasa namacharyas madras ramadasa time even tyagaraja they composed songs as a means of uh, social expression plus devotion mm. and many of them they had a, a band of disciples a bhajana uh, shishya mandali who would act as a bhajana mandali who would repeat what they sang it started like that but then once improvisation started we started singing alap and singing sargams and once the creative thing started coming there was a very great shift so while i sing carnatic music which has both compositions and improvisation the general trend shifted very very greatly away from the lyrical importance it is all about improvisation mm. so uh, many many musicians who have been singing for 30 years 40 years maybe the same song which they must have sung 2000 or 5000 times if you ask them what it means they wouldn't know the meaning oh. you know not not of word by word but even the general idea oh. so but they have very high profile and a lot of concerts and respectability and whatever uh, because of the virtuosity the technical prowess the mathematical complexities and stuff like that so uh, i people before me i don't want to pass any judgment or comment on that because even when i started studying music in 1980s i was living in kerala in tiruvanthapuram there was a malayali my guru was also from kerala 
and all the songs we learn are either in sanskrit or in telugu and uh, we don't know either sanskrit or telugu okay. and uh, the, there is no source for us to find out the meaning so suppose i ask my guru what what is this he said no, this is what my guru taught me and <laughs> i i knew my guru's guru also so i would ask him so this is what my guru taught me so it's just whatever you hear something and you repeat and then you pass it on to the next generation okay. and it goes on like that but uh, things changed that there were books of course uh, which had lyrics and meaning but then they were not accessible to the average music student average music teacher or performer and nobody paid interest in that direction like books were there they would just be sleeping in some bookshop or library Uh, but uh, there were some musicians even at that time my second guru dr mangalam palle balamurli krishna he uh, did not even have the be- benefit of uh, formal education but he was always uh, i he was i want not to be as good as anybody else i want to be even better than anybody else. so uh, whether it's speaking in english for i know people who have passed a 10th standard exam or gone to college and got a degree but they can't speak english proper i'm not saying speaking in english is a big deal or there are many amazing people who don't speak english at all and there are many horrible people who speak nice english but that, that's all <laughs> so it's not i'm not saying that as a, um, a measure of somebody's greatness or not but just as an example balamurli krishna born in 1930 in a small village in andhra pradesh Uh, once he went to uh, at, at that time all india radio station was there only in vijayawada so a person uh, from rajamadri any place if they want to sing in a radio they have to go to vijayawada so he gave a concert he was only 9 years old and then there was a news reader he, she must have been an anglo indian or something so he said how do you do and she extended her hand and he had, had no idea what she was saying or that you have to shake hands so he just <laughs> stood and smiled and then she kind of laughed at him as poor kid he doesn't know how to shake hands or how to speak english or whatever but he felt that she had laughed at him so at that age of 8 or 9 years old he went back home and he started listening to the news on radio uh, the old indio radio news <laughs> <laughs> so with that accent so this is the news read by whoever so then he would uh, get his father or somebody to read the news in telugu so that he would understand and slowly by like with music as you know uh, just listening 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 a lot would help us improve so he would listen to english spoken and balamurli sir told me that within 6 months when he went to the same radio station again he met the same news reader lady and he stuck out his hand and said how do you do first <laughs> that is like one big accomplishment for him but that is an exception the, the rule is that mostly we uh, we are content uh, just to sing whatever we are taught without going deep into that so in my case i later discovered that uh, there are musicians i like a lot uh, called md ramanathan who is from kerala but md ramanathan uh, if he sang a telugu song it would be like a telugu person singing a telugu song same with tamil same with sanskrit so though he was a malayali uh, later after he passed away i was privileged to uh, access his own composition he has written around 300 compositions md ramanathan he has written the telugu songs in telugu script Yeah, well. uh, tamil songs in tamil script and sanskrit songs in sanskrit script though he was a malayali and he was a 1920s born but in fact his centenary is coming next year probably so people who had the will powers who were self driven who were curious to go deep into that and the same composition which everybody sings when these people who were uh, connected to the lyrics when they sing the, the whole composition sounds different so because it's of like the soul is missing so yeah so the, the soul missing version is what goes around popularly yeah. so when the, so the tyagaraja for example he has composed a lot of songs which are very painful and crying he is like oh rama i have been praying to you how come you are not looking at me and again and you are so nice to that guy and that guy and there only me you are ignoring that that's a recurring theme in tyagaraja songs <laughs> but we sing it in a very bright and happy way with a putting talam and say looking at our accompanist and but then when one of these people balamurli krishna or md ramanathan or tv gopalakrishnan some few people who know the lyrics they sing it with that pathos and that feeling 
the people who are used to hearing the same way they say oh, he is singing it differently while actually he is the one who is singing it correctly <laughs> <laughs> so in my case i as a young person when i started discovering this and i was horrified at what a gross injustice was done to the lyrical wealth that we were blessed with i used to pass comments on that and elder musicians and elder listeners they would be very angry who is this young boy Uh, to even question or criticize some people you just don't question they are beyond the approach yeah, yeah. no <laughs> in every field i am sure you'll know also. so nowadays i don't uh, pass comments on that but i sing it what i to the best of my ability to do justice to the spirit of the composer then we have improvisation we can sing sargams for half an hour we can sing alap we have absolute music so then i find it's a some people say oh, no we should give 50 50 importance to lyrics and music i say no we should give 100% importance both to lyrics and to music so they have this like in rhyme since the uh, outfit which is hosting us is o dot org who is all about shakespeare those days poetry had rhythm, rhyme and meter So yeah. oh, uh, now we have absolute poetry. So I still remember the first poem I read, uh, which we had in school in our English textbook. That was like, "I would like to dive." That is one line. Down the second line into the deep sea. Like so, I would like to dive is first line, and down is the second line. So I was like, "Is this a poem or what?" Because <laughs> no? I till then I had seen only with the rhyme and chanda and rhyme and meter. Yeah. so uh, but many people who write uh, without rhyme and meter they they say that if there is rhyme and meter it restricts my flow of expression or what but i have read so much uh, even comic verse by dr soos and people like that uh, which is full of rhyme and meter but i don't see them frustrated even a little bit in expressing whatever they want to express yeah, yeah. it's the same with the music and the lyrics and if people feel that if you pay attention to lyrics then we you can't do justice to music i feel they are not working hard enough if you really uh, go deeply you can do justice to both i, I feel just but so true so true i totally agree <laughs> <laughs> even even my first guru was 100% against recording so he would teach me in class and he would repeat 300 times also till i got it he would repeat but he never liked recording Uh, while uh, during my lifetime itself my second guru balamurli krishna he was all in favor of recording so in fact if i take a video balamurli krishna was a, such a showman that he is just sitting like this and i just show a video camera he'll come to life and do something <laughs> you know he reveled uh, reveled in uh, being photographed and audio recorded and video recorded so i am very uh, in fact i tell my students it's good it is better if you record the lessons not only the song but the whole session then you can listen to that again and again which is a luxury i did not have with my guru so uh, i feel technology is anyway there so may as well use whatever is good in but about audio visual I, i as a person who reads books and watches movies till now i have always preferred the book to the movie Uh, whether it's gone with the wind or thorn birds or <laughs> any out of africa except uh, godfather somehow i never watched the movie and never read the book i have both i have di- different people have told me the movie is good the book is good so i have been wondering which which to do first the movie or the book so but other than godfather almost 100% the devil wears prada or if uh, everything uh, the book is better I, I, for me <laughs> so and your interest in uh, you know poets who uh, master in uh, humor uh, poetry and uh, so where, where did that come from like you know how did it grow uh, did it develop uh, mostly i i did most of my reading in english as a kid uh, we had enid blyton and alfred hitchcock and the three investigators then of all these comics archie and tintin and asterix and some of them i i still like a lot uh, now i'm uh, almost on the wrong side of uh, closer to 60 than 50 <laughs> now i'm 53 now but uh, 60 is coming like i can see 60 just coming at me from out of the window <laughs> <laughs> but some of the books i read as uh, a child i find them very very nice even now some of it i don't find it that nice See there are uh, our Hindu Puranas, for example. We have this abbreviated, small capsule version for children. But when we read the real Purana, is a whole whole different dimension. Okay. 
so what amar chitra katha is but at that age that that had its that served its own purpose it was very very nice but some uh, books like roll dal for example roll dal he has written uh, naughty poetry also they are supposed to be for children but the the themes are little not very suitable for children <laughs> <laughs> but the rhyme and meter is always there yeah. always even when somebody is speaking when i find two words which rhyme i, I get attracted to, to that sound same similar sounding words Mm-hmm. So, I love for poetry. Uh, mm-hmm. So uh, you know, also I noticed that you have a great uh, social media presence. Uh, actually, n- not much because I, I am not on Instagram. I'm not on Facebook. I'm not on Twitter. In fact, because of the lockdown only, I even started really using WhatsApp. Otherwise, it was all SMS only. So, but SMS bills kept <laughs> becoming strong, bigger than my telephone call bill. Yes, so yes. now I have taken WhatsApp. Okay. But uh, I'm not except YouTube. YouTube uh-huh. also. I have my own channel mm-hmm. where I have up- uploaded uh, videos of other people. Uh, mm-hmm. so many which I recorded when I first got a video camera. Some which my father caught off the television, mm-hmm. like that. But then uh, I kind of stopped. uploading for 5 6 years ago but i have this friend well wisher person who keeps pushing me all the time who calls himself music box so he has a youtube channel where he used to upload only my videos to start with then since i don't upload these days i give some videos of other people who i like and he uploads that also so youtube is the only place where actually uh, i have small presence and uh, now uh, during the past one year because of the pandemic and the lockdown for the first time i started sitting here with my phone and started making videos in this room uh, same setting and just making small small tips for music students and sometimes some silly joke or some hindi film songs which i have always liked which i have never sung in public mm-hmm. like kishor kumar rafi st varman uh, hemant kumar all those people so that is a very recent even teaching online i never did till very 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 recently uh, now everything has changed now we don't even know how long this is going to last whether how many of us will survive that nothing nobody can predict anything yeah, this is very unpredictable it's very sad situation yeah. uh, but how do you feel about uh, social media matlab do you think it's um, you know it's something which is really promoting art culture it's like it, life of the artist is becoming easier or it's really tough it, it is very tough for me frankly it seems yeah. like i am not of the age <laughs> yeah i think uh, uh, as i said about uh, internet i'm not about social media internet i feel in my life internet has been almost 100% good firstly yeah. be- because of youtube i started getting concerts and invitations for teaching because in how he, it works here is that the organizers are the boss so when we are an upcoming musician the musicians send applications to organizers and say please give me a chance i have never applied till today and because i never applied i never got concerts either <laughs> but even not getting concerts was better for me than applying people call i i go that's it and if they are happy they call me again and if i am happy i accept again <laughs> that's it so but after youtube specifically came so many invitations from a small village in tamil nadu like raja palayam near madurai to an unexpected location like tokyo or singapore i have got concerts only based on people seeing my youtube videos and calling me so for me personally just my career and youtube it's been the biggest blessing for me uh, but uh, there's lot of quantitatively so much is there now i mean suppose there's a small kid in the house and it sings uh, some om jay jagadish hare or some film song or whatever completely off key also people have the option to put it out and the things which become viral many times i want it's fascinating to see what gets views so, so true so <laughs> and it, it pains my heart as well you know no, like yeah such such things getting popular and you know accepted but we, we can there is no accounting for the, for the taste of the public no they, what they like they like so which i just observe hmm. 
and feel there are actually some things which I feel are not all that great getting 10 million views that paints me less than some really good stuff lying there with no views at all. No, <laughs> no I'm not talking about uh, you or me, but there are other musicians from the past also. Generally, the more, I mean, the general trend, I find that the more original you are, the less views you get. The more of a copy, I suppose I'm an original, I get 10 views. I'm a copy means I get 20 views. I'm a copy of a copy means I get 40 views. <laughs> copy of a copy of a copy. The more times of a copy, then it goes like bigger, that. Bigger audience. <laughs> yeah, it seems to happen like that. So uh, it's not exactly uh, just my online presence. It is the material which I present in my concerts also because we have this specifically again it's not some abstract thing specifically there is this one form of weird composition called western note to swaram so western note to swaram happened because during the british rule at that time tyagaraja dikshitera all those people lived during british rule they were exposed to the western tunes played by the brass bands and uh, especially Muthuswami Dikshitir, more than anyone else, he would take these Western tunes and put Sanskrit lyrics for them. So they have uh, what is forbidding and what is typical in Carnatic music, the gamakams are completely absent. They are plain notes. So for example, uh, I'll show you. So suppose... In Shankara, we have a raga called Shankara Parayan. Sari. So, Ri is oscillating. That is Carnatic music. While in uh, Western music, suppose you take Sari Gama so, This anyone can, it is not difficult to appreciate that. So, so all these Western notes are. Uh, in this format, it's a so kanchi sam ekam brannayaka nitya maham bhaje kama dishachora vritti maham tyaje panchakshara swarupam agamanta saram panchasyam adhikaranam visveswaram guru guham. One song is over. <laughs> it is one song. Pankaja Mukha Shankara Hita Sankata Hara Venkata Giri Vasana Rayana Nanta Gobinta Damodara Nanta Samta Shakasrita Vatsalya Pradam Boruha Guru Guha Hita Pahimam Dina Bandho Pahimam Dina. This is one song. So there is around 35 of these songs or maybe 40. So these were there for two, two, 250 years but they were sleeping in books. A few people, maybe some instrumentalists would take Mande Meenakshi Tvam Sarasi Javakre Parne Padre Nata Sura Brinde Shakti Guru Guha Palini Jalaru Hacharane Sundara Pandya Nande Maya Suri Janadhare Sundara Raja Sahodari Gauri Shubhakari Satata Maham So, over. This is all. Uh, uh, Kamala sana vandita padabde kamaniya karoda. Like that. Each one is charming. They're like small one chocolate or something like that. So though they were existing uh, as a serious music listener myself, I had never heard people sing these in concerts. So once I discovered them, I felt that if it is okay for a big guy like Dikshitir to compose them, then I am not bigger than Dikshitir, where I feel this is below my level to sing. So I started singing these Western notes in concerts. And that, that would, and I would see the reaction in the face of the audience, suddenly they will become very bright and uh, happy. So I found that even adults and senior citizens were enjoying this a lot. But when I started first giving concerts, I was young and my audience were mostly senior citizens. But now that I am becoming a senior citizen, my audience age is becoming <laughs> below 10 because of these Western notes. And also my body language, I don't look scary or forbidding. I smile at my companies and they feel, they can see that we are all enjoying uh, having a nice time. So children find my body language plus these songs uh, very non-intimidating. So 
that is uh, suppose i am my 100 videos are there on youtube but all of them i am singing ta na ta re re na 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 re the children won't be watching that even if they have ipad ipad and phone and all that so it's selection of material also very very important then tilanas some tilanas again we have old tilanas which are nice in their own way but my guruji dr balamurlikshna he was ultimate tilana master so his tilanas can just galvanize any listener so tilana nadridhim tadaratani nadridhirtum nadridhirtum dhim nanana tajanu dhimita chanu tadhim tarikita kita tala tajam tani tajam tani tajam tani tilana nadridhim tadaratani nadridhirtum tat ൈവ but uh, not only that one flavor no? yes in so, hindustani music uh, the great um, ustad bade gula malik khan his signature was sab rang so all colors so one color is boring so all colors will be there so i i like sab rang also a lot so in, in fact i used to do that but i he put it into words sab rang oh yeah sab rang that's a nice idea you know the way you listen uh, even listening to good music you need a certain amount of uh, kya kehte hain training for that yeah, absolutely you know? so in my family matlab I, i remember like none of us were taught to be performers but we were taught music to be good listeners uh, definitely i mean i'm sure you would have uh, watched the movie dead poet society no so that so that idea oh, that happened so many years ago but that poet says it, it it moved me a lot i mean though i am not a shakespearean poetry scholar i love that movie the, just the idea we had um, in um, hindi films we had a devanand film called ishq 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 so where he would take the children out to the garden sit under a tree and sing a song and teach them and whatever so i don't know the whole story but he was a teacher who like robin williams in that poet society so i like that approach a lot and in fact i i still remember uh, because the teacher was revolutionary guy devanand in that movie he is dismissed by the school so when he is leaving all the children are crying so and of course kishor kumar sings oh my god <laughs> like that. so kishor kumar sings a song acche bacche nahi rote hai so acche bacche nahi rote hai aansu bure hote hai then ke baagon mein bhool फिर खिलेंगे कहीं हम फिर मिलेंगे मेड फॉर चिल्ड्रन एंड ही इज हार्ट ब्रोकन ही इज इन टीयर्स हिमसेल्फ दैट ही इज लीविंग देम बट ही पुट्स ऑन दिस ब्रेव लेट्स ऑल बी हैप्पी वील मीट सम अदर टाइम सो इट्स अ सैड सॉन्ग बट संग इन अ हैप्पी ट्यून एंड हैप्पी लिरिक्स so even now i i physically burst into tears when i hear that song in fact i burst into tears when i hear that song without seeing the visual because the, the, what emotion kishor kumar brings in my mind is much superior to what we actually see on screen <laughs> with devanand with the guitar <laughs> but um, yeah so definitely i feel it's a very very good thing like during the interview i mentioned about my aunt introducing me to reading when i was 5 6 years old so that because i started at 5 6 years old that's what is going on even now yeah okay another thing i wanted to ask you was uh, do you think uh, the carnatic music is it the interest of people is it declining is it the same or is it increasing I mean, number number wise definitely increasing uh-huh. number wise uh-huh. but the quality hmm. that uh, only time will tell <laughs> because uh-huh. there is some Uh, see some things as i said about uh, children's books some things i liked when i was 10 years old which i don't find interesting now yeah. but there are some things i read when i was 10 years old which i still like so oh. similarly there are some carnatic musicians or music recordings which i was very impressed by when i was 13 years old 15 years old then when i was 25 years old i was not that impressed 
uh, with the same recording yeah. while there are some other recordings which i was impressed when i was 15 years old which now i'm even more impressed oh, when i realize even more uh, uh, go deeply into music i'm like oh my god oh, what is this so there are some there is a singer called madhure maniyar for example mm-hmm. madhure maniyar md ramnathan there are few musicians now i listen at a much deeper level and i am even more impressed mm-hmm. now uh, but, but the current what is going on now how much of it is good or bad because it's happening right now we can't tell only time will tell you what i am doing also it will be after my time that's time will evaluate whether it, it was of some value or it'll just fade away you know? so, yeah we can't decide yeah so i was watching your old videos uh, concerts as well as interviews okay and uh, what i noticed was that uh, you're somebody who's so shy as a young person and uh, you were so shy that you you shied away from the interviewer from the audience you would not even meet their eyes <laughs> and now it is not the same all of a sudden this has shifted and uh, you know how did how did this shift happen uh, that is not like some it just happened like a very specific reason because yeah. i spent uh, 18 years with very 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 closely with dr mangalam palli balamurli krishna sir who was a uh, patma sri patma bhushan patma vibhushan 12 doctorate sangeeta kala this and that he was like highly decorated person very big celebrity so among carnatic musicians probably he was the most recognizable person who would be honored by pandit ravi shankar and lata mangeshkar and uh, by tamil uh, malayalam film industry people by the man on the street the person on the street so be just being like a, a tail or shadow with him i would see him interact with his fans and be interviewed by several journalists for newspaper for radio for tv for an internet thing and how he would uh, in uh, interact with these people and put them at so he could do both suppose he didn't like a journalist he could go on talking but at the end when they had sit down to write a copy they wouldn't have anything you <laughs> know he will just kind of uh, put a smoke screen type thing but suppose he liked somebody he could really give them enough so that they can write 12 pages also mm. uh, so like that uh, but he would always do it in a very soft and sweet kind of way he would never be aggressive or unpleasant or obnoxious but what he revealed or not he would he was totally in control so this after the interview we would just sit and chat and then he would reveal see see that person did like this so i gave answer like this so then i'm like i didn't notice all that mm-hmm. so i would just be natural which i am even now but somehow having sat with him doing so many interviews i just became very relaxed even if i'm on tv and it's live i don't feel uh, nervous at all and because i i don't feel nervous the person interviewing me also becomes relaxed very soon and you know, i don't I'm not tension generating <laughs> like you're not because i was so nervous this is the first time i'm you know doing this i'm taking somebody's interview uh, you would be more used to be so nervous <laughs> you 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 would be more used to being interviewed i think <laughs> <laughs> oh my god and oh no but yeah it is like you really put me at ease thank you you are welcome there is one I mean, it help that i have heard you sing also so it's a already one positive uh, prejudice is there already <laughs> in your favor so but uh, there is one story of a man who has never been sick but finally he has a heart problem and he has to have a heart surgery so he goes to the hospital and he is on the stretcher and they are going to give him Uh, anesthesia and then he just grabs the hand of the doctor and he cries to the doctor doctor i have never been sick in my whole life then this is the first time i'm going to have an open heart surgery and i'm so nervous the doctor just hugs him like oh i know what you feel this is the first time i'm going to do a surgery <laughs> <laughs> so you know yeah <laughs> so. and also i saw one of your interviews um, on bbc so it was a very very old interview 
and uh, the interviewer he asked you to sing oh, and no. you graciously declined <laughs> <laughs> i was terrified actually i was not gracious at all. <laughs> no i'm like i i now i can just sing i at that time i felt you need a shruti and violin and bridanga when you sit down proper dress and i'm wearing shoes and trousers and sitting in a chair and no shruti and now can i sing i was just horrified <laughs> <laughs> okay okay i didn't thought he you didn't want to Uh, sing because of the tradition and you know not tradition i didn't want to sing that is true <laughs> because that's so just unexpected yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay and also i wanted to ask you was uh, like your reservation towards the concert format so could you please elaborate like rather and en- enlighten us on that uh, it's not exactly reservation and um till 1920s apparently we used to have like drupad we had very big alaps yeah. so one hour alap followed by a composition followed by again by what we call naraval which is called boltan in the north indian but with the words we do improvise okay. and sargam so the whole thing would just at a very relaxed pace um, my one of my biggest heroes is a gentleman called md ramnathan and his guru was called varadacharya but because he used to sing like that he, people called him tiger varadacharya <laughs> <laughs> because of the things he did with his hands and face so many his compositions are called ah this composition is by tiger we don't even say varadacharya oh. so he's called tiger so tiger apparently uh, would give concerts where uh, audience would be around 10 15 people who would sit around him they would have breakfast and after breakfast he would start singing an ala so from around 10 till around 1 1:30 the alap would be just building up and at 1:30 they all eat together and after they eat they lie down and have a siesta so they'll take a nap for 1 1 and a half hours and 3:30 4 o'clock he'll wake up and lying down he'll start the alap from the point where he stopped before lunch so, and it will go on till 8 or 9 at night and they have dinner and again 2 hours <laughs> and still uh, the, i i know people who have actually witnessed this so this is not some story from 300 years ago so still you feel he just covered a few aspects of the raga there's so much more to be said you know uh, that that impression of, of abundance he, he could give while by 19 Uh, earlier early part of the 20th century uh, a gentleman called ariyakudi ramanujam ayyengar came and uh, he had his own uh, strengths and weaknesses like all of us have mm-hmm. so he exploited both his strengths to the maximum and weaknesses he covered by cutting down the duration of improvisation so uh, instead of one big gala all his alaps would be less than 5 minutes or 7 minutes short 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 then number of songs were increased mm-hmm. by hugely instead of four or five songs it will be like 15 20 songs within 3 uh, hours 4 hours so those days concert duration would be 3 hours or 4 4 hours even so one varnam then one song on ganesha then just one or two songs then what we call a sub main which is a with alap and uh, sargam and there will and whatever then two song then a main main followed by a percussion solo followed by one more song followed by what we call a ragam tanam pallavi so ragam is ala punni tanam is like ala jod jhala jod is tanam for us and jhala equivalent is pallavi so for that one more percussion uh, solo followed by a few bhajans and devotional songs and finally tillana and mangalam so that format he established and it was something which nobody had heard of till that point mm-hmm. so for common people who found long ala very tedious and boring mm-hmm. there was never a dull moment it was all jam 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 yeah. and he completely did away with vilambit we we don't have vilambit at all everything will be medium fast or very fast nothing slower than that okay. so even slow songs were speeded up okay um, in this format and many of the song slow songs which are really beautiful when sung slowly uh, i am not attracted to this format because i feel there is variety one tillana or something you sing really fast something in medium tempo something in slow speed all varieties make it more vivid and colorful than the same tempo for everything so then i uh, started um, cutting down the number of compositions i don't do like uh, tiger did 8 hour ala but uh, instead of a 
Rahul Tanu Pallavi, main piece, sub main, and something else. I sing one main piece where the alap will be at least twenty minutes or something. So, in a four to seven minute setup, twenty minutes is like a big alap. And more than that, I don't deliberately stretch it to uh, see make a statement. I sang big alap, not like that, but I do it in a relaxed manner. so that there is no feeling that you are squeezing in as much as you can within a short time you okay. feel that uh, relaxed expansive abundant uh, kind of feeling so then what i did was um, pay attention to the lyrics in whatever language i sing i am a malayali but i sing it mostly in sanskrit and telugu followed by kannada followed by tamil followed by malayalam <laughs> actually malayalam because what we have com- good composers from kerala but even the kerala composers many of them they composed in sanskrit uh, including my ancestor maharaj swadhi thirana and uh, the so called malayalam pieces are also around 85 to 90% uh, sanskrit with a few words in malayalam pure malayalam no without sanskrit because malayalam itself is a combination of tamil and sanskrit so uh, like if i use an if i use a hindi example if i say in malayalam uh, pita my pita means aapka pita ji like that but uh, we have a tamil word tandai which is tandai means father only uh, in tamil but in malayalam we have both pita which is the sanskrit word for father but tamil word for father is tandai in malayalam you say the word tande that person will beat you up because it's like tere baap you know uh-huh. that impression <laughs> so uh, it's many many words i find it's not insulting tamil at all tamil is very beautiful in its own way but how tamil words are used in malayalam uh, can be sometimes not very nice uh, so i start when i started pay, paying attention to the lyrics and their meaning naturally the tempo also changed whenever it's a sad so shira sagar is saying that so uh, lord sri patmanabha who is reclining on the serpent ananta ananta which means no end and no beginning in the ocean of milk so you imagine this so magnificent so big gigantic form so you think shira sa सागर सायन सो सो इफ यू सिंग क्षीर सागर जस्ट मार्चिंग क्षीर सागर नो बट वेन पीपल आर यूज टू हियरिंग दैट टेम्पो फॉर ट्वेंटी इयर्स थर्टी इयर्स सडनली समबडी कम्स विथ ओ गॉड सो गुड यू कैन ब्लेम देम फॉर फाइंडिंग दैट बोरिंग ऑल्सो बिकॉज दे आर सो यूज टू वन टेम्पो सो दैट इज देन टू थ्री थिंग्स आई एम आई हैव डन ग्रेजुअली बट कॉन्शियसली सेकेंड थिंग इज श्री त्यागराजा मतु स्वामी दीक्षित श्यामा शास्त्री महाराजा स्वाल ऑल दीज पीपल लिव ऑलमोस्ट एक्सैक्टली एट द सेम टाइम विच इज अराउंड टू फिफ्टी इयर्स एगो सो मोस्ट ऑफ द कॉन्सर्ट एनीबडी सिंग्स वेदर आई एम फ्रॉम केरला और कर्नाटका और तमिलनाडु और आंध्र प्रदेश और बॉम्बे द सेलेक्शन ऑफ सॉन्ग्स वुड बी मोस्टली फ्रॉम दीज पीपल फ्रॉम अराउंड दैट टाइम सो देर हैव बीन ग्रेट कंपोजर्स हु लिव बिफोर दैम and there have been and there still are people who are composing after their time so i always uh, when i plan the menu i always include some tyagaraja uh, dikshitar shama shastri together they are called the trinity trinity so i always choose songs before the trinity and after the trinity also so there will be one anamacharya or purandradasa who is 600 years old plus um, tv gopalakshan sir who is still alive or balamurli sir who passed away a few years ago so there will be uh, a composition by someone who is still alive so someone who died 5 years ago someone who died 200 years ago and someone who lived 600 years ago that is one thing then language also i try one, one telugu one tamilalam one kannada one tamil one sanskrit like that uh, to have variety and try and explain the meaning I suppose I'm singing in Madras. I might explain in Tamil. I suppose it's in some other place. I might explain in English. But give the audience a chance to get an insight into the lyrics, so that at least a few people, when I sing Shri Rasagarasena slowly, 
uh, oh they'll know oh, okay this is why so they can because at that i learned from dancers because many dancers before they present the item they explain the meaning they explain the meaning and with the gestures also so uh, in the morning when the sun rose and the flower opened and then your eyes are like this whatever they they show so when they explain in english and they show all these mudras then when the actual performance comes you can i don't know oh, okay this is what is going on then just somebody is doing something and you don't know what is happening uh, so explaining the meaning is another thing then tempo also i like uh, very much the variety in tempo not all slow or all medium or all fast normally carnatic music generally if you hear it will be medium to fast usually oh, you uh, and people who sing slow they kind of make a state oh, i am singing slow no so not like anything contrived suppose i'm i'm trying to be funny or i'm trying to be sexy or i'm trying to be smart anything it for me it loses the value when it's trying to be something naturally it should come yeah yeah so then, true. <laughs> so true so true so another thing i wanted to ask you uh, is that uh, musicians from kerala you know they have relo- relo- re- relocated to madras uh, you know saying that uh, kerala is not conducive for their growth what are your views on that and not only kerala uh, from andhra from karnataka karnataka from, uh, from everywhere that this was a historic thing because during the british rule there was this area of land called the madras presidency uh-huh. and one of the all india radio stations used to be in madras uh-huh. at that time for a person living in some other place you want to sing on radio is the ultimate thing yeah uh, so to sing on radio you have to go to madras one that is one reason second reason um, apart from some maharajas like uh, travancore royal family um, i am not saying that because i am from that family but actually that was the case dramankur maharani mysore maharaja there are few maharajas who would honor artists from anywhere in the world or anywhere in the country but many other places were and continue to be very parochial so uh, while madras at that time was very open and welcoming to just merit uh, irrespective of whether somebody came from my, my guru balamurli krishna he was from andhra pradesh but he by 1950 he settled in madras mm-hmm. so in fact madras one of the big institutions is called the music academy mm-hmm. so music academy wall next to that is balamurli krishna's house but balamurli sir's house was there many years before music academy came there so he will always say now you know now people tell me sir your house is next to music academy no i say i am senior to music academy they came <laughs> <laughs> so many years later <laughs> no? so uh, there the are radio singing in radio plus welcoming uh, artists from all cultures used to be their uh, situation at that time uh, then uh, now it's like when you are in rome uh, do as romans do so to establish in madras or in any place you have to play the game by certain rules so if you are not prepared to play the game by the rule those rules then you don't get established there but then uh, either we decide okay these are this is what you have to do to establish yourself in this place i'm going to do that okay then fine i'm not going to do that then don't aspire to being established in that i, I am on my own path that is also fine but if you say no no i won't do it like that but i want that then <laughs> that doesn't work that uh, so for me there are many things i have given up um, knowingly and willingly because i was not prepared to do certain things so but then i don't feel bitter about that because i know i had i st- had and still have uh, the choice of going a certain way and getting certain things mm-hmm. but then i know people who have done that i see balamurli krishna for example i have been with him when he gets an award so what happens in public and later uh, his reaction how much of pleasure it gave him or did not give him <laughs> that when we get to see that then we uh, before there is a taste and there is a after taste you know, so when somebody gives me a chocolate cake 2 uh, kilos i eat the whole thing in one sitting means tomorrow i'll be in the bathroom the whole time <laughs> so now itself when i see the chocolate cake i tell myself hey listen 
you're going to wipe out two kilos today, then tomorrow you're going to suffer. Okay, then I, <laughs> so just think of the aftertaste, then many things which seem attractive when you don't have it, oh, that looks very nice. But when you get it, it's like, oh, I needn't have done all these things to get that. So it doesn't feel, the taste doesn't feel good, no? So true. So, true. so yeah. So that is the, but, but uh, like, I live in Trivandrum and I want to make a Hindi film which will sweep the nation. Bombay is the location for that, no? Bollywood, no? like that. So the, like that, Madras has uh, earned itself a position geographically over several decades. But uh, what is actually happening there, uh, merit-wise, time will tell. That's all. My, my classes or my concerts or I have a festival in Trivanda. Video recording is allowed. They are put up on YouTube. You can see me. You can hear me. You can see the other artists who sing for my festival also. Uh, but uh, suppose my hand is empty. And I just hold it like this. No, I won't show you. <laughs> means so no photography, no recording, no nothing. Like that. then there's one bubble which is created. Oh wow, something must be inside there. Then you open, nothing is there. It's like that. There's a lot of uh, build up in certain places where they just build one intrigue around the whole thing. Mm -hmm. uh, but when you go inside, it's not such a big deal actually. So because I spent 18 years with Balamurli sir, and at that time. The general Madras music field did not even know I was physically in Madras with him because I would be in his house. I would learn songs maybe in the evening. I'll attend a concert and go and stay in my place. But I was not doing the rounds and meeting the Sabha secretaries and asking for a chance, you know, opportunities or nothing like that. So I got to see and I can, I'm very, very good at being completely inconspicuous. Suppose I'm sitting in a room with Bala Mulisar and three others come there. Uh, they won't even see that I'm sitting there. We just uh, blend into the background type. Some people just stand out. No? So uh, with me, that was not there. So when I'm sitting quietly, I got to see a lot uh, ringside view of how things work. And I found, especially after YouTube came. Before that, of course, I, I, I was not confident or secure or happy or anything at all. Well, and YouTube came only by 2008-9. So from 1990, I was singing. So 1990 to 2010, what did I do? Nobody knows. You know, so uh, if you had met me at that time, you would have seen a very different person because I was, oh, I'm seeing so much, I'm working so hard, and nobody's calling me. And so they, you know, it was I always. I really can't imagine. I really can't imagine yeah. that you. I know, really, that was the case. I was very, very sad and frustrated and angry and helpless, and you don't know what to do. But I know what to do that I don't want to do. <laughs> so it was a very uh, difficult situation at that time. That's why I, I owe my life to, to Music Box because he's the person who forced me. At that time, there, my father would take videos of my concerts and those videos I shared with him, he put it up. That's how it started. I never made videos for the channel or anything. But now I'm sitting here and I'll just make some video and put it, send it to him, he'll put it up. So that I couldn't... 10 years ago, if somebody had told me, you know, 10 years later, you'll be sitting alone in a room looking at a phone and making a video and, and putting it. I, I never and I would have said. <laughs> <laughs> so, but, so now I, I never say never for anything because so many things I thought I would never do, I have done. So, so anything can happen to anybody. So true. So true. Yeah. So true. Life is such, you know? uh, Yeah, no bold declarations. No, no, I'll never do that. No. <laughs> Where, what life is bringing it on. <laughs> Good. So, uh, you know, uh, we had two schools of uh, music, classical music in our country. One is Hindustani and one is Karnatak. So if we uh, see that the pull towards uh, Hindustani music, like uh, South Indian uh, learning Hindustani music is, you know, uh, more likely rather than vice versa. So, uh, you know, I was just wondering, ki, uh, is it because of the language barrier or is it, uh, or th is there something deeper to it? Yeah, it is because of South Indian form of gamakams, what we call it. Ah. So they are very forbidding. <laughs> you, know, you forget Hindustani music. You look at the normal man on the, or person on the street in Bangalore or Trivandrum or Madras, 
who are enraptured when they listen to a song by S.P. Balasubramaniam or S. Janaki or P. Sushila or Chitra or Jeshudas, any of these people. So they are musical people, definitely. But because they love these songs and they are moved, they feel happy, they are moved to tears, they feel devotion, so many things they feel listening to film songs. The same guy, he see, switches on TV and he sees a Carnatic concert, he immediately changes the channel. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so why not because of language problem or he's not even ethnically North Indian is from this place only but because the way people uh, abuse the oscillations which we call gamakams uh, like if you make a dish with no salt at all it will be very boring you can't eat that so you put a pinch of salt oh, it's very tasty oh, so pinch of salt made it so tasty then I'll put this much salt <laughs> 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 then you can't eat that, no? That's so so that, that's a problem with the Carnatic Gamakams because people, we have very good instrumentalists, very, very, very good instrumentalists who play all over the world and who do Jugalbandi and the Insani musicians also. But it is only the Carnatic voice uh, which has this problem because uh, some people, like starting with Ariyakudi, they had a particular kind of voice which for him, I salute him 100 times for having succeeded the way he did with what equipment God had given him. But then a person can't sustain one note in Shruti steadily for a long time. They will not sing a long note. He suppose I take suppose uh, Different. Pa. I'm old. But a person pa, like that, if they sing, then what will they do? If they can't sing pa, steadily. It'll go on like that. You know? So when they, I am a Carnatic musician and I just sang this now, but if I hear me, even me singing, I don't find it musical at all or attractive or aesthetic. <laughs> <laughs> it is crude and it's offensive actually. But this guy with that voice sings in a certain way and that person is successful. They have 10 students who will sing exactly like that, including students who have very good voice to start with. They model themselves on their guru. No, this is how my guru sang. He never sustained a note. So I also, I also won't sustain it. <laughs> In fact, to, to, since I mentioned Ariyakudi by name, Ariyakudi Ramanujayangar had several disciples. Yeah. But the biggest name among all his disciples was a gentleman called K.V. Narayana Swami. K.V.N. they used to call him. He completely changed the way he sang from how his guru sang. Because he sang long alapanas. He sang in Shruti. He paid attention to the lyrics. Come, but he is a Ryukudi student. <laughs> so uh, he had that branding of being the student of this very big icon. But he refined things in his own way and made a very big name than his students who sang exactly like him. The same thing happens. Balamurli Krishna's guru had many, many disciples. But Balamurli Krishna was the most famous because he didn't sing exactly like his guru. Though the, if you look at the Agaraja Kriti recording of his guru, he has sung exactly the same thing. Authentic, correct, what he got from his guru. He's not tampered with the basic form at all. But something he did then just sing like his guru. Same thing I'm also trying in my own way, not just singing a photocopy of Balamurli Krishna because then Balamurli Krishna himself is why he listened to me. No? Yeah. Yeah. And always... If you don't imitate, when we, when we like somebody or when we start under any guru, automatically we'll imitate them. Yeah. Uh, automatically happens. But then, uh, or we can do, okay, just for the sake of being different, my guru did this, so I'll do that. That is also, <laughs> I, I don't uh, do that. But naturally, we, we find ourselves and develop our own uh, personality, our own set of values and aesthetics. Then our own set of, see, now I have uh, O, doing this interview with me, though I am just a Carnatic musician sitting here in my room. So some people uh, see what we are doing and they feel there is something of value and uh, they reach out. It, it happens. It's, not, it's just at the right pace. I, mean, I don't feel nobody is seeing me and I don't feel, oh my God, I can't 
get one minute to myself because I'm bombarded by it. It's just right. It's just no? right. Yeah, it's very, very nice. Okay. okay, so you coming from the royal family. I know this is a very usual question. <laughs> uh, so you're coming from the royal family. How difficult was it for you when you chose your, uh, you know, when you decided that this is what I want to do for my life? Like I want to be a musician. How how hard a fight did you have to put? It was, it was not the royal family because just like, uh, let's say cricket, for example, in the same house, and father, mother and two children are there. One person might be crazy about cricket and another person may hate cricket. Yeah. So same thing was there in my family also. So mm -hmm. there, there was my mother's mother's mother, who was my great grandmother, mm -hmm. who was mad about classical music. So she was completely mad. about. So she only selected my first and extraordinary guru, uh, which really set me on course for everything else that came afterwards. Mm -hmm. I owe my music, I owe my life existence to her actually. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately for me, uh, she died uh, very soon after she selected this amazing guru for me. Um, uh, but in a few months, she died. Uh, but the same amazing grandmother, she had a very dominating personality. Mm. So, uh, and that impacted the next generation. Mm. So, I love chocolate. Okay, so you have this chocolate, but suppose you hold me down and push this chocolate into my mouth, then the chocolate I love itself, I won't like. No. <laughs> so, <laughs> unfortunately, that happened with uh, her children, uh -huh. uh, especially her, in my family, it is matri matrilineal and matriarchal. Okay. So, my great-grandmother died and her daughter who was my mother's mother. She was the uh, boss, big boss of the family. So, she... Uh, in a, if I say it in a very simple sentence, whatever her mother liked, she didn't like. <laughs> so that's all. So including some very beautiful uh, uh, family properties, she liked a lot. So the moment she died, my grandmother said, oh, we have to sell that immediately because her mother liked it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> that was very, oh, we find the same with politicians also. You know? uh, uh, one party is ruling and next party comes. Whether it's good or bad, whatever these people did, they just want to scrap, it's good wipe, wipe it out. And they want to do that. And then again, these people come, they will do the same thing back. Mm -hmm. no, that revenge politics, same thing happened mm -hmm. in, in a private setup also. Mm -hmm. So unfortunately for me, though it was nothing personal, which I discovered many years later, mm -hmm. uh, the number one thing which I identified, which is identified with my great-grandmother was Carnatic person. And that is something I became very fond of. And that was the enemy number one for my grandmother. <laughs> <laughs> and I was only 14, 15 years old. I'm, now I'm 53. At 13, 14, it's a very difficult situation yeah. to have the big boss of the family hate what you're doing. No? So it was very, very, very difficult at that time. So when my guru passed away, my guru passed away in November 1994. Uh, there are even today, now it's 2021. So 1994, my guru passed away. In 2021, there are still two people living in Trivandrum whom I respect like a guru, even today. But because of this atmosphere at home, uh, when my guru passed away, I decided, I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know where I'll be, but I want to be out of Trivandrum uh, because that setup was just you know, crushing the life out of me. And the irony was that if I got one concert or two concerts somewhere, there will be people who, without listening to me, would write me up and, ah, he's that prince from the palace, no? His family would have paid a lot of money and promoted him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that was a double <laughs> whammy for me. So not knowing, uh, people not knowing the reality. So there are some people who would say, oh, he's so arrogant. He must be, they have not even seen me. Oh. Uh, that's why I said uh, YouTube, I owe so much because YouTube, I am there. If, I'm not saying I'm good or bad, but you can listen to me yourself and decide yes, whether I'm good or bad for yourself. You can listen for yourself than just you know, quote somebody saying, oh, because he's from the palace, uh, he got a concert. Oh. So that changed, uh, but that changed, as I said, only in 2008, 9, 10. Mm. Uh, but at that time when my grandmother was there, it was very, very difficult. And the same grandmother, she also had a tough life because everyone saw her as a, um, the great grandmother's daughter so the public presumed that naturally she must be as musical as mm -hmm. the mother so she would be invited on a very regular basis to be a chief guest at music festivals 
and to give awards to big musicians mm. which she would accept <laughs> so she would she would because it is too deeply ingrained in her so she would go and just quote some line from bhagavad gita about music or something make it very short Uh, to not reveal her ignorance or contempt <laughs> for the art form she just say i am very happy and she looked very sweet was a small lady with nice white teeth and soft voice just you see her you feel oh so sweet no that, that kind of <laughs> so she would give an award and uh, come home so uh, for her also i i looking back now the, now she is no longer alive i think for more than uh, 10 years so with that distance i can view the situation dispassionately and see it must have been tough for her also to keep living this role of that great music loving maharani's daughter and keep attending music festivals so it was for her 90th birthday that finally i gave a concert at home that is parts of it it's there on youtube also mm-hmm. by that time video had come already mm-hmm. <laughs> so on for her 90th birthday i sang a concert and she was happy and i was happy and we just let it go all the previous things so it ended on a happy note but before that it is very 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 difficult i always got uh, amazing uh, help and support the kindness of strangers you can say the uh, strangers who later became friends are very uh, important people in my life but, but to start with they were no but just some people so i feel if there is god if there is some celestial plan then some things which you feel you deserve you don't get but some other amazing things you get you do i deserve this it's so amazing so it all works total will balance out <laughs> i feel good and bad okay. mm-hmm. so uh, okay so, uh, now i'll talk about your interest in reading okay and uh, you everybody knows that you have a great interest in reading and yet you call yourself somebody who is not well read okay <laughs> and <laughs> i'm sure this is your humility and <laughs> your modesty so if you are not well read who do you think is well read <laughs> <laughs> not well read as in i'm not done some some people who kind of we think oh so he is well very well read what we expect something i don't know i don't know how to put it really but see i have read rc and tintin and asterix <laughs> so so that with that i wouldn't call oh i'm well read so i've read one big range of books yes but i never read to kind of become well read i like books i started reading whatever is there i would read uh, some uh, i like uh, laughter a lot so i like to laugh i like to make others laugh so i read funny books i read even joke books uh, so i read joke books maximum when i was around 14 to 18 that age so many jokes i learned at that time i still remember <laughs> but uh, most of them though i was below 18 at that time the jokes are all above 18 <laughs> <laughs> so, so i used to so even during my concerts somewhere there on youtube also during my concerts also i would suddenly come out with this joke which would be totally shocking to the public <laughs> but now because i started teaching a lot and many of the students are below 5 and below 10 and all that i have to really watch my words and not say something you know not here <laughs> <laughs> and how early do, do you think that uh, you know uh, one should uh, start reading or develop a reading habit and um, i was very lucky because my mother's sister my aunt who is now a published writer now at that time she she was not a writer at all mm. uh, but when we were children i i was a very unhealthy child so every month i would fall sick for two three days okay then finally i had some ayurvedic medicine and became all right but at that time so i would miss school also mm. so then my aunt would come, my aunt my same grandmother who later became a problem when i started going into music deeply <laughs> but as a child she was very kind so my aunt my grandmother and uh, the actual maharaja sri chitra tirunal if i open my eyes one of these three people would be there by my bedside so if suppose i had cold and cough and fever it could be even infectious but still they would be there all the time so um, the maharaja he was an extraordinary storyteller but not reading he would tell stories on the spot from the puranas or scarlet pimpernel or uh, lorlen hardy stories or something like that 
but my aunt would read stories from Enid Blyton or Beatrix Potter, some of these books. So she would read in English and explain in Malayalam, slowly, slowly. So I got to hear that. And sometimes when she would read, I'd say, no, you don't, have, I understood. You don't have to translate. Slowly, slowly. Then she would read it to a certain point and keep the story at an exciting moment. Then she said, ah, now I'll have lunch and come. I mean, you know, no, 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 what happened? <laughs> so uh, she'll just leave the book there. So I'm curious to know what happened. So I would pick up the book and read uh, the thing myself. And then when she came back, I, I would, at that age, when I was six or seven, I would say, oh, I know what happens next. And she would know, obviously, that I have read it myself. But like that, 100% uh, I owe it uh, to my aunt uh, for having developed this reading habit. Then I think it was when I was seven years old that I read one entire book in one sitting. On August 15th, we had school holiday. <laughs> so I still remember it was a Enid Blyton book called Mr. Galliano's Circus. <laughs> so uh, I started after breakfast and by evening I finished the whole book. I read one full book in a day. <laughs> I can never forget that moment. <laughs> Though it happened, and even now I don't read with the idea of covering 100 pages or 200 pages. I, I want to digest and enjoy and savor. It's not about the volume of uh, how much you read. Even food also. Just to shove food into the mouth, no point. You have to enjoy it. No? Enjoy. <laughs> so true, so true. And do you think uh, as new technologies are replacing all the traditional methods of doing things, do you think audio-visual uh, mediums, they are also uh, replacing reading? Uh, I, I have many friends who tell me you should try audio books and Kindle, okay. Kindle and whatever. I have till now I've read only read a physical book, but uh, I have friends whom I like a lot and uh, whose opinions also I respect a lot. Who tell me, see, suppose I, I want to clean my room and there's this audio book playing, then I can do something else and this will be going on. I don't have to sit and uh, uh, strain my eyes. Yeah. But I haven't tried that till now. Yeah. I don't. Maybe, maybe. I, I tried that, but I, How was I, it? I no, I didn't like that. I didn't like <laughs> nothing like reading a physical book. Oh. I don't even like Kindle, I think. A Kindle, also, a Kindle, also, I haven't tried. I but let's see, there is this, uh, what's his name? Uh, a British comedian called Michael McIntyre. So, Michael McIntyre has brought out his memoirs, hmm. which he's reading himself, and he's a comedian, stand up comedian. So he apparently does these accents, how his mother spoke and grandmother spoke and joke. And so all that, he's bringing it to life the way uh, he reads it. So that, that makes it more entertaining. Uh, in mm -hmm. fact, a friend of mine gifted me and that is that thing is sitting in Trivandrum and I am sitting in Bangalore. So <laughs> I, I still haven't heard that. But it's something which is very much on the queue. I have to listen to that and see what I feel. Because he's an entertainer and a voice a talented person also. It sounds very interesting. <laughs> but do you have a favorite track? I, I love Bihag. Uh -huh. It's a it's a Hindustani raga. We we imported that. But I, I love Bihag. If if you uh, talk about my top ten, it'll be Bihag, 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 and eleven will be something else. <laughs> <laughs> and do you sing Bihag? I sing about we called something Bihag, which is actually Mishra Bihag. It has a lot of notes, Komalni and all that, which we don't have in Bihag. Yeah. So I sing that, but I call it South Indian Bihag, just to make it... Uh, so who's, who's uh, Bihag you love the most listening to? Listening? I, it's difficult to say. I love uh, Nikhil Banerjee a lot generally, but I've heard only one Bihag of his, which he played in Germany or something. Mm -hmm. uh, it's very difficult to say. Yeah, there's one Omkar Nath. I mean, usually I hear many, many people singing the same song. Kaise Sukhu So Many bandits are sung in many gharanas. Kaise Sukhu So Then Lattu Olach. These two, I've heard same two songs sung by many, 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 many people. So I have wondered also why there are not many songs or what, because it's such a big, main, major raga, no? Yeah. So the, I think uh, in Hindustani music, uh, there are a few compositions. And also, I think uh, many musicians didn't uh, forward it 
स्टूडियोस में नेक्स्ट जनरेशन कुछ रियल हमारे पास है ये बंदिश हमारे घर हमारे पास रहेगी तो वो भी हुआ तो वो जो पॉपुलर ऐसा होता था कि मेनी टाइम तुम जब स्टेज पे गाते थे तो स्टेज पे वो जो तुम्हारे पास रियल चीजें होती थी तुम प्रेजेंट ही नहीं करते थे तो वो जो पॉपुलर ऑलरेडी है वही प्रेजेंट हो जाती थी इसलिए आई थिंक फ्यू वर्ड्स से रिलेटेड you 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 sing uh, only sufi or you sing classical stuff i've been trained i've been trained uh, classically but yeah. uh, uh, but that is the base of everything uh, but i uh, for me uh, i related to the bhakti uh, poetry more more uh, even more than music so oh. for me uh, my music is more about uh, you know rendition of the poetry let's say o o has appointed you to interview me because of poetry <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, okay i am very fond of all those ragas with the two madhyams ah. so we, uh, in carnatic music we have many ragas with two nishadam two daivat and two ri and two ga but two ma we don't have so the whatever two ma ragas we have are imported from hindustani Yes, and i have a big i don't know see now i learned i started studying music and even knowing what is aa re ga ma only when i was 12 13 years old but even hindi film songs which i used to love long before that later i discovered oh they have two madhyams <laughs> and some of them are ba- based on bihag also ek zindagi ke safar pe guzar ja so re 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 pa ma ga ma ga ma pa ga ma so the two mas I just love we were um, Kedar, Kedar, Kalyan, uh, yeah, yeah Kalyan yeah, and um, Sudha Sarang, Sudha uh, L- Lalit, Lalit. Oh my God! Mm-hmm. The first I I can't even forget the first time I heard Lalit like, with two mas and without pancham. That was <laughs> something I I could not even imagine a thing like that at that time. Yes, yes. So uh, I had a concert in a place, and after the concert there was a dinner in somebody's house, and. they were playing as background music when everyone is having a champagne and food and all that uh, they had played a, uh, it's now available on youtube there's a uh, 70 minute lalit recording by hari prasad chaurasia yeah? uh-huh. so it was just this and start with a sublime slow alap and mm-hmm. i have given a concert and the people are standing to talk to me basically but this was just pulling me so i would, kept going i would take a seat near the speaker where, <laughs> and with this low volume so just be sitting there and somebody would be talking to me and i am like uh, <laughs> and i didn't i didn't even get it that i thought it was ma sa re ga ma ma da ni sa ni da da ma ma so ma ma da ni da re ga ma so i thought it is like sa re ga ma ba da ni like a todi in madhyam shruti that's what i thought so but then i it's not that it is a sound me to the ma then when i suddenly realized oh my god two mas and no pa it is like eureka moment i couldn't even share it with anybody that look at this this is raga with two madhyams and no pancham <laughs> lalit does that to you oh god lalit also nikhil banerjee has some amazing lalits so yeah so generally two madhyam ragas most of them i like even bhairavi has to when that tivra madhyam comes is like whoa bhairavi ka sab rang sab rang yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah actually <laughs> kaise bhi ga lo usko <laughs> yeah, yeah. so yeah generally i like uh, two madhyams a lot of which bihag is what comes to my mind first so my last question to you is uh, that uh, you know it's well known that you've been somebody who's uh, stood for uh, women uh, presenting uh, their art at the navratra navratra mandalam you know and uh, so my question here is ki uh, why is it ki abhi bhi in this age and time that uh, women presenters women artists are given lesser stage than the male artists and not necessarily i mean probably the biggest all time biggest name in carnatic music is ms subalakshmi who's a woman <laughs> so she was of course you know, very conveniently close to the ruling party also nehru and uh-huh. so and she acted uh, as meera bai and she acted in hindi movies she sang meera bhajans she yeah. sang telugu songs by anama charya her language was a weapon in her hand which is a very beautiful probably in my mind the 
most beautiful weapon we can have is language so you sing a kannada song correctly you sing a telugu song correctly malayalam song so ms subalakshmi she covered so many languages not only in south india north indian languages also so women uh, we have had uh, very big women we still have very big women who command they like can tennis there there's a big fight for equal pay but we have many women artists who command bigger fees than most of the male artists mm-hmm. even now Mm-hmm. so that was never but navaratri mandapam it was something which started i don't know when 300 years ago where even as listeners women could not enter the place they had to sit outside and listen so it's not only the singer mm-hmm. so suppose we have a veena concert and a man is playing a veena mm-hmm. if a woman plays also veena is the sound is the same but women uh, veena plays were also uh, not allowed so i used to question this and i'm happy that at that time fortunately there's no social media it was 2006 or 7 at that time so now every every word you say you can immediately one whatsapp clip will go viral and people would quote you out of context and one controversy then response to that and people thrive off that at that time very quietly it happened and one lady came she was 82 years old at that time parasala ponnamal she just passed away a few weeks ago so we were still in touch like few days before she passed away it was a beginning of a very beautiful friendship Uh, between me at uh, 40 <laughs> for uh, and she at 82 very 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 wonderful lady <clears throat> so she sang 10 15 years after that every year so and i put her on her because of my good time and her good time youtube came immediately soon after she sang at this place and i my father and i we had taken a video of her concert so we put a put it on youtube and people especially from america at that time in india youtube had not come much because the internet speed itself was not uh, fast enough to view a video so people started asking me who is this person when it's a black and white video because navaratri that venue is lit up only by oil lamps so we can't take video actually so they put the camera in night vision mode so it's a grainy black and white image so they thought it's some 1940s film so no 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 this happened just now and she's still singing and i would give her phone number to various organizers they would call her and first she traveled to madras then she traveled to bombay then bangalore then finally at age 87 or 88 she made a tour of america 15 concerts <laughs> <laughs> then she got padma award so she went to rashtrapati bhavan got the padma shri yeah, yeah. so after she was 90 yeah. <laughs> so it was this last after 84 82 she had this wow. <laughs> marathon career wow. and in madras once she that i don't think i will accept even today but she had a concert invitation for one evening and one more concert next morning and one more concert next evening so <laughs> two two days she sang three three hour concerts at age 87 88 so she said even during my youth i had never done something like this but the thing is that with each uh, with a foreign trip or a trip to bombay or with these uh, with each of these things she became smarter and younger and more energetic uh, uh, yeah it's really uh, especially the american tour uh, before and after it's like she became 20 years younger so became very smart and i said oh my god you are getting younger and younger yeah, oh i don't know they are just saying i have been singing the same thing for the last 60 years but suddenly everyone is making a <laughs> big big deal about it very, i think this is this is about music now uh, so many artists uh, all their life you know they dedicate to music okay but you get fame out of you know who knows but what works you can't there's no fixed formula to it yeah, absolutely it is some some very mysterious ways it works. some some things of course as i said i've seen how whom to meet what to talk and <laughs> that format is there then we can get something uh, but this in her case it just happened yeah. as you rightly said that sometimes it happens uh, not sometimes many times it happens yeah. But when it happens like this now it is it is the most uh, beautiful way to experience oh, when it happens or grace in it hey absolutely thank you thank you so much uh, uh, sir keeping in uh, line with o spirit we have a small gift for you uh, from a young and talented metal artist his name is suraj so he runs a metal art studio by the name of craft tune light we have all the details here in the description for you 
so please stop gifting plastic we have great artists and sustainability should be our lifestyle not just a mantra but because uh, we are hit by the pandemic and so our chat is on online so our option is only to call you so it will reach you very soon the gift oh. <laughs> thank you so much thank you so much thank you it's a pleasure in fact see since it is officially announced that you are interviewing me i answered your questions but we can do one more where we just have a conversation and i ask you questions also because uh, it's nice That's to a huge honor for me <laughs> someone uh, someone whether you sing opera or drupad or khayal or karnatik or bhajan we are all same family in one way we are singing the same 12 notes Absolutely. so it's nice uh, to compare notes and learn more about each other system i i, I learned so much from this interview <laughs> you. you're you. just uh-huh. your you know the way you are as an artist it is humbling to see somebody like that <laughs>